गुड इवनिंग नमस्कार आदाब वेलकम वेलकम एज ऑलवेज योर फेवरेट न्यूज डेस्टिनेशन द ईयर इज स्लोली कमिंग टू एन एंड एंड आई कैन सी ऑन ऑल प्रैक्टिकल फ्रंट्स people are getting into celebratory mode people want to enjoy there are parties that are going on we've just come off a hectic marriage season and now you're entering pre christmas festivities pre new year's eve celebrations grand parties being planned but folks here's a realistic scenario here's a reality check which you must be aware of before you start thinking in terms of leaving your places or thinking in terms of going to a hotel and having a nice time with your friends the omicron variant is spreading it's spreading and it's spreading rapidly in our very own country i leave it up to you to decide whether you think we have the requisite infrastructure to deal with the aftershocks of yet another spread of this pandemic we've gone through two rounds there was the first variant then we went through the delta variant and there was all hell had broken loose the us president joe biden now is warning of winter of death for the unvaccinated in the united states of america in india though while while the numbers of the omicron variant have still not grown substantially but the percentage of people the number of people who are being impacted from 57 till just a few hours back now it's gone up to 100 states which are being affected now increasing look at that it's pretty much all states from maharashtra to delhi to karnataka to tamil nadu to telangana all the way to west bengal rajasthan gujarat no indian state today hardly any i mean maybe barring the northeast if you look at it has been left untouched by the omicron variant so while we get into this festivity mode we need to be aware that despite all various medical opinions which have been given to us that it's a virus which spreads rapidly but is not as lethal it may be in your systems but it is does not force or does not lead us to hospitalization or any serious health complications my simple point is this folks we can't let a scenario where this omicron variant ends up becoming a challenge for us because if it happens it will not be a good story i don't think india as a as a society as an economy can deal with the aftershocks of yet another variant what's being stated by dr lav agarwal and the chief of uh, the anti covid task force dr vk paul let's just play the responses for you पिछले 20 दिनों से देश में जो डेली नए केस रिपोर्ट हो रहे हैं उसकी संख्या दस हजार से कम है लेकिन ओमिक्रोन के परिप्रेक्ष्य में साथ ही इस परिप्रेक्ष्य में कि पूरे विश्व में केसेस काफी अधिक संख्या में नोट किए जा रहे हैं जरूरी है कि हम कंटिन्यूड बेसिस पर अपना विजिलेंस को बनाए रखें चालीस एक्टिव केसेज देश के अभी केरला स्टेट में है बारह प्रतिशत के करीब केसेज महाराष्ट्र में है और वेस्ट बंगाल तमिलनाडु और कर्नाटका यह तीन स्टेट ऐसी हैं जहां पर कि 5000 से अधिक एक्टिव केसेस अभी नोट किए जा रहे हैं 11 स्टेट में टोटल 101 ओमिक्रॉन केसेस अब तक डिटेक्ट हुए हैं इस संख्या में ऑन ए डेली बेसिस देश में ट्रैक किया जाता है महाराष्ट्र में 32 केस दिल्ली में बाईस केस राजस्थान कर्नाटका तेलंगाना ऐसे करते हुए करीब ग्यारह स्टेट में एक केस अब तक नोट किए जा चुके हैं साइक्ट्रॉन जैसा एक नंबर बड़े हैं यूरोप में और स्टीप राइज आपने आपको दिखाया स्पेसिफिक कंट्रीज का इट्स नॉट ओनली साउथ अफ्रीका इट्स नॉट ओनली बोट्सवाना इट्स नॉट ओनली जिम्बाब्वे समथिंग अ न्यू फेज ऑफ पैंडेमिक इज बीइंग एक्सपीरियंस्ड इन 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 यूरोप व्हिच इज समथिंग दैट वी हैव ऑलवेज बीन वॉचिंग फॉर द गवर्नमेंट आर एंड डी सिस्टम हैज इंटेंसिफाइड जीनोमिक सर्वेलेंस और ओमिक्रॉन में एक खास बात यह है कि अब जीनोमिक ही हो जाता तभी पता चलता उससे पहले उसके चेहरे पर लिखा ही नहीं है कि इस इन्फेक्शन जो आर टी पी सी आर में आई है उसमें इसका मतलब है डिले भी होती है पता चलने में भी देर रहेगी जब तक पिक्चर सामने आएगी कई कुछ हो चुका होगा वो यहाँ का है वो यहाँ जाके दिखाई देता है tremendous effort has been made systematic effort has been made the collective alertness ko sara jaise aapko bataya gaya kis tarah se ye sara coordinate ho raha hai whole of government effort whole of nation effort winter of deaths being projected by the us president so a stern warning for the unvaccinated in india the problem being a problem of plenty the problem that we are letting our guard down how are we going to deal with this scenario four top medical aces joining us tonight dr ashok seth one of the foremost medical voices in the country chairman fortis escorts heart institute 
Dr. Rankit Baidya, infectious diseases physician, Dr. Samit Gupta from the Metro Group of Hospitals joining us live and Dr. Venkat Rao from the Sum Hospital joining us live as well. Good evening and welcome to all of you. Dr. Said, let me begin with you, sir, first and let me ask you to respond to this situation. How bad is the situation? Straight up, sir. How, what are we looking at at this stage? Dr. Said. You know, we used to call Delta as, as a, a tsunami. Now imagine there's just been three weeks since the first, first Omicron case was reported from South Africa, South Africa. It's already overwhelming for Europe and, and, and UK for the moment. 1,100, more than 11,000 cases of Omicron yesterday. It's added on to the whole wave, which is the largest surge coming in Europe and, United, uh, and UK like never before. This is the maximum number of cases happening. They're going backwards in time. It is, it is so vicious that it's doubling has gone down from three to two days. So when you look at all what's happening in within three weeks, 77 countries, we got to understand that it's only inevitable that a third wave is going to happen in India because we actually have the biggest NIDAS for infection. We are a country which is overpopulated, large number of people in a small area, one of the most congested countries. Yes, our COVID norms have actually gone away in a multiple ways when you see the groups and the crowds without masks and actually having a party. But that's why we are seeing that also happen, by the way, in Europe and in the UK, because there the rules and regulations of masks had gone away. Hmm. And that is why we're seeing this annihilation. The problem of India is that if this virus is, and it's in a, inevitable, it's going to happen. Hmm. We may, let's not take solace from the fact that it's got a mild illness, uh, only few will get a flu-like illness. Just the scale of it hmm. is going to be so huge hmm. that even if a small proportion of the people got serious and went to the hospital or got admitted to the hospital or required, required more intensive treatment, that volume would be used. And by the way, but where do you stand? the severity the, of infection, but, but, by the way, just one yeah, more fact, yeah. the severity, of infection, the of, it, severity, the severity of infection relies hmm. on the host response, hmm. on the host immunity. And by the way, we have loads of population which have either lost their immunity because of elder being elderly or immunosuppressed or even haven't even been vaccinated. Hmm. So actually at the end of the day, we are at a grave risk and we better take it seriously. It's just around the corner that we actually go to see our third so wave. Let's tell me, pray tell, tell me that it's thing. not serious. <clears throat> Doctor said, tell me one thing. Yeah. You know, we've had, I've had the professors from, from IITs joining us on this program. I've spoken to top experts. There are, there are two different opinions, sir, which I've heard. One is right. that the third wave is going to hit us in the month of December. One is it's going to be a very, very mild wave and we actually may not even realize that the wave has come and it is gone and it will happen in February. How do you respond to both these scenarios, sir? See, I don't think any of us can pretend to be very intelligent about this virus. Mm. Let's take it for granted. Correct, sir. We've neither foreseen it in the past. We've always followed the virus, never got ahead of it. Mm. So let's not be so intelligent enough to be able to predict everything which is going to happen ahead. The fact that somebody says that it's a mild illness, let's pray that it's a mild illness. But mm. if you notice mm. that what finally does happen is that, that four to six weeks is when you start realizing the severity of any illnesses and the number of people who would require hospital admission. And let us hope that what the reports coming from South Africa are correct. But that's not what the UK is seeing at the moment. Mm. UK is seeing the rise in hospital admissions. Mm. It's certainly not seeing the deaths at the moment. But you also know that the deaths follow another four weeks of a lag period. Mm. So I think more information is going to come. We can only pray that it is mild. Hmm. But let's be prepared for the worst because, yes, there are immunosuppressed people. Sure. There are people who have lost their immunities. There are elderlies also. And there are those who got single vaccination doses. Hmm. And we already know there are two facts we know about the virus. One, that it is highly infectious than ever seen before. Secondly, that it bypasses immunity of the vaccination as well as inane immunity. What we don't know is the severity. Let's not sound okay. so intelligent. That so let's that not sound intelligent. Let's not get ahead of the game. All right, let's take Correct. that. Dr. Absolutely. Samir Gupta, 
now that Dr. Ashok said has laid the foundation very clearly, let's not try and be too intelligent. Let's not try and predict it will happen in December or it will happen in February. If I just look at numbers, in the UK, the overall number of people who have been infected now stands at 40%. So obviously, this variant is spreading very, very fast. What do we do in India, sir, at this stage? You know, um, I, I would agree with everything Dr. Seth said. Uh, there's, not, there's a lot we know and there's a lot more we don't know. I would just like to add one more point. Um, there is, when you look at the whole, the, the UK uh, the, and parts of Europe and even in South Africa, there's a lot of hospitalizations that is happening. Hmm. And it's happening at a very high rate. Hmm. Uh, there is some data which has come out that Omicron is sending people to the hospital uh, earlier as compared to the Delta variant. So the Delta variant was sending people on an average to the hospital on the ninth to 10th day. And Omicron is sending people to the hospital at the sixth day mark. Does that have anything to do with the severity of the virus? Well, that is to be determined, like Dr. Said said. Uh, we have to wait three to four weeks. Hmm. And 40% of the people um, are, are, are getting infected. And that's huge, right? This hmm. number is huge. Hmm. Uh, I'd say I cannot emphasize the importance of trying to go back to the COVID norms you know, of going, of pull, pulling ourselves back. I know the economy is just open. People are going out. The wedding season, now the holiday season, you know, we had also planned some travel here and there. But I think all of that, as of today, now has to come to a full stop. But we have to realize that health is more important. But we're not getting, you know, we're not getting it. You know, Dr. Gupta, my, my fear is, and I want to bring you Dr. Ankita Bede on to this one. My fear is, Dr. Bede, we're, we're going back to where we were, you know, in the Delta variant scenario. You remember at that time the West Bengal elections were staring at us in our in our face and and you know and whatever happened we were just unwilling we had a Bihar election we had a West Bengal election all happened during COVID times now there is the Omicron threat and you're looking at UP Punjab Uttarakhand Goa you know again critical states which are going to polls January onwards campaigning will pick up by the time you reach February the election schedule would be out people will be up and about. Are we really looking at a dangerous scenario here in India, Dr. Bajan? Yes, yes, absolutely, Bupendra. If we see, we have to learn from the past, whatever mistakes have been made in the past. So the second wave was a dreadful scenario that everybody had gone through. Hmm. Now, as we see the UK scenario, that we see that Omicron is almost 70% more infectious if we compare it with the Delta variant. So, and see, seeing the Indian case scenario also, the cases are rising. Almost 11 states are now infected and have reported the Omicron strain. And also, as Dr. Seth also mentioned, the RT-PCR is not the test that can detect that you are having Omicron uh, uh, infection. Hmm. So, uh, just limiting all these things and taking in, into account all these things, it must be noticed by the government that such campaigning should not happen we don't want to see any third wave right now uh, after after seeing the second wave, the preparedness. If we see there are reports of pediatric populations also getting affected hmm. uh, abroad. So hmm. if we see this, uh, we don't know exactly how the pediatric population is being catered in our country right now. The pediatric ICUs uh, are not ready up to the mark if the numbers actually raise, uh, raise to the numbers. If we see the 130 crore of Indian population is there and the rate the Omicron virus spread and if it, it, it spreads even if the most of the numbers are mild infections and um, a minority also if it is uh, the people who require hospitalization in that case also uh, the numbers will be so huge that the admissions in hospitals could be a difficult uh, difficult uh, situation and the healthcare uh, facilities might not well be Dr. Rao are we already well. looking at this you know this I must admit Dr. Rao Dr. Venkat Rao this is the first time sir that I'm now, I'm now seeing, uh, I'm seeing the needle of concern certainly has moved. You know, we've done a lot of programming here and we've got top doctors from across the country. When I'm listening to all the three experts today, all three top, you know, uh, doctors, I'm getting a sense that something is happening. Am I overreacting to the scenario or is something staring at us in our faces and we're not willing to acknowledge it? In a single sentence, if I put it, there is a thin line of demarcation between panic and preparedness. This is not only for applicable to you, to me, or to the general public, to the whole world. Mm. Because we are all human beings, mm. and we are not able to differentiate between the panic and the preparedness. Now, what is happening, I would 
fully agree with all the three experts, whatever they have told, mm. absolutely right. Mm. But two more perspectives I would like to put it through. Mm. When in the first wave, the, the Omicron virus, I mean, uh, coronavirus was there in other countries, mm. and the first wave was delayed in India, we were of the opinion that Indian population is different. BCG vaccination, because tuberculosis and all those issues, measles vaccination, dengue, all mm. these infections were prevalent in our country. Yeah, we were declaring is, victory. We were declaring victory in December, you know, of December of 2020, that all was well. Absolutely. If we were, I mean, thinking about that, at the same time, now we have to think that if Omicron is spreading so fast, and in South Africa, if it is very safe virus, do you expect that the Indian population also will be safe? Mm. Then it will be it. I mean, I mean, it will be a fourth. But then I'm not yeah. understanding, you know, I, as I hold all of you for a moment, but as I slip into a short break and we'll come back, I'm not understanding if the situation is so serious. And make no mistake about it, folks, from Dr. Say to Dr. Bedha to Dr. Gupta to Dr. Rao, what is being stated today on India Head is that the needle of feeling safe, that this Omicron variant is not a major threat to us, I think that question is getting very clear answers tonight that Omicron variant is indeed a major threat to us and we jolly well be prepared to face that threat. What should we be doing? Is booster dose the answer? Why is there this delay in booster dose? Look at that question on the other side of the short break. The question of booster dose. Dr. Said, what do you make out of this, sir? You know, the World Health Organization now is singing a very different line as far as the, the efficacy of existing COVID vaccines against Omicron variant is concerned. We just had Dr. VK Paul the other day saying that you may need to tweak the existing nature of vaccines if you have to deal with this Omicron variant. What do you make out of that situation, sir? So let me just be very clear about the booster dosing. Hmm. Firstly, of course, I trust our experts uh, and their advice on the booster dosing for the country because it's a fine balance of, of uh, equity, fine balance of availability. But there's no question on taking sides on the booster. One thing is very clear in science, that boosters are going to be needed. The issue is when. And the issue is, when is the availability versus equity the right time? I'm going to really, really emphasizing the point that a roadmap has to be created for booster. I mean, we know exactly how many vaccines we have, how many vaccines we're giving. Our focus is second dose, that's correct. But believe you me, it's been clearly shown that boosters are going to be needed. Uh, boosters actually increase immunity. Boosters are now getting very important for this variant. And there's no point saying, let's wait for our data two months down the road. Why the delay? Decide. Why, why so, the so delay? Doctor said, why do you that, think there's that a delay I in India? I wouldn't be able to answer, but I would certainly suggest What's the challenge? that a roadmap is needed because hmm. there are three three groups which are very important straight away. Hmm. Firstly, of course, we not need to understand that we don't call it a booster, but the third dose is needed okay. for those who had transplants, those who are immunosuppressed hmm. because they haven't even mounted an immunity. Hmm. The secondly, both elderly and the healthcare workers, by the way, the healthcare workers were going to be the front line in the battle which lies ahead. And by the way, it's quick, it is lying ahead just around the corner is going to be very valid because eight to 10 months have gone and the diminity of the doctors, the healthcare workers is decreasing and it's time to effort for them to have a booster because even now UK is worried that a major proportion of his healthcare workers are going to be affected and going off sick and who's going to look after the increased number of patients who are getting admitted. That was the statement of the but UK's chief loss. medical officer. Exactly. And Dr. finally, Dr. Said, and finally uh, the elderly need to be given a booster. Sir, but I'm at a loss. Because, you know, you're being absolutely clear of what needs to be done. I'm just trying to understand there is your clarity of thought. There is VK right. Paul, who's making it very clear that the existing vaccines may not be good enough to deal with this Omicron variant. And yet we're debating when we should have this booster dose. Can why? What could be the biggest challenge for the Indian establishment not to be in a position to make up its mind whether you need it or not. I can't answer that. And I'm just urging them to create a roadmap. What mm. we want to see is a roadmap. Mm. We know exactly how many doses are available. I also hear that doses are not being used as much as we want, as much as we would like the double dosing to happen as fast as possible. Mm. And if they're not going to be used, then they might as well get used for the boosters. So yes, a roadmap, how many boosters, when it has to come, I don't mind somebody telling me it's down a month, we'll consider it a month later. Hmm. 
I, we need a plan for booster, just like we created a plan for double vaccination. Hmm. We know vaccines are there. We know how many vaccines are there. And we know the country requires booster. Let's decide on a roadmap. Well, That's I, all I would say. Well, I can tell you that in response to a, an RTI plea, which was filed before the, before the health ministry today, you now have data which shows how much money is actually being spent by the government of India when it comes to dealing with these various vaccines, from co-vaccine to Covishield, what is the amount of money which is being spent by the Indian Council for Medical Research? This is the RTI reply that ICMR has invested close to 55 crores for development and clinical trials of Covaxin, Covishield and Covovax. Dr. Baidya, if only 55 crores has been spent by ICMR and maybe there is more money which has been spent by the health ministry or other, other parts of, of the Indian political establishment, why do you think, what could be the logic that we are still not clear as a government, as a polity, whether you required booster shots or not. So, uh, first, first part I want to answer that, uh, that uh, why we are not clear. So, if we see the current status of double vaccinated individuals in our country, it is less than 50%, though more than 100 crores vaccine doses have been given. But actual numbers of complete vaccinated uh, population is less than 50%, somewhere close to around 30% it is. So, and recent study from UK have shown that the uh, Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, that is mRNA vaccine, targeting the spike protein, hmm. uh, both doses who the people who have received were able to neutralize only 40 percent, up to 40 percent extent to to this Omicron <coughs> variant. Hmm. But on receiving the booster dose, it was around uh, 80 percent. So, so 40 percent is definitely better than zero that two doses, at least two doses has to be given. So we have to look into the logistics also. Right now, if we see majority of the population is not completely vaccinated, yes, the frontline workers and the healthcare workers have to be considered because they got vaccine dose, uh, the first dose in the month of January, February, initially when the program started. Mm. And they should be considered because they will be topmost uh, who are going to be affected also more early because now, they this are is, dealing this, in the this is becoming a very com this is becoming yeah. a very very complicated complex scenario dr samir gupta on one hand the overall percentage of people in india who have been double vaccinated is well still lesser double vaccinated on the other we're saying that there are vaccines which are available so therefore it's not a question of uh, supply maybe it's a question of intent and we're looking at what's happening in america then to top it all we're saying that if you have to deal with omicron you need a different Maybe a different vaccine, maybe some tweaking of the vaccine. What is the way forward? What do you think India really needs to be doing over the next three months? Yeah, I think first and foremost, uh, we need to have, like, like, like my previous speakers have said, we need to have a roadmap, right? Uh, now, if you look at how respiratory infections go, if you look at the flu, uh, every year you get a flu vaccine, right? You, every year you get a flu vaccine, which, uh, which contains all the relevant strains, which are currently causing infection. Hmm. In the future, this is how COVID is going to be. Right? Every year, you will have to take a COVID vaccine, uh, which is going to have the most relevant strains, which are currently circulating right now. Hmm. So that is what is going to happen uh, as we go forward. Hmm. Uh, I completely agree with you that right now, there are so many people who have not gotten the second, the second dose also. In fact, even in our hospitals and in uh, and other medical hospitals, uh, people the, the vaccination rate has dropped so much hmm. that they are saying that we have vaccines lying, but nobody's coming to get it. Hmm. So it may not be a bad idea for us to uh, start offering the booster vaccines. Hmm. Uh, the other day, I was also reading that the, the Serum Institute is cutting down its production. Hmm. So, you know, we don't want to be in a stage where we now need boost Boosters, it's you know now you suddenly need a hundred crore more vaccines. Hmm. Uh, you know the production has has stopped, so we are back to what we were in May and June, hmm. where people were not able to get the vaccine because of lack of production. So we need to act fast. We need to be quick, hmm. and uh, we need to be efficient. Okay. Well, let's just hope. As I thank all of you for joining us on the show tonight. Let's just hope that this roadmap that all of you are asking for is a roadmap which comes in sooner than later. It's a roadmap which should be depended upon by the authorities to ensure that we don't come out sleeping. We, we sh no, no question, I don't think there's any scope of trying to play catch up with the developing story, with this evolving scenario. If we know that we're looking, we're staring at this Omicron variant, we need to go all out folks, we need to ensure whether it's on the electoral front, political front, personal front, domestic front, party front, whatever front, we need to ensure that we are in control of our own selves. You drop your guard down, 
Don't keep your sanitizer with you. Don't mask up. If you don't get vaccinated, you're playing with fire. You're playing with your own life. Don't do that. India cannot afford that. Your family members can't afford that. Still, we could do a short break. When we come back, our next big story.